In this video, I will be showing you all the harsh reality of ant keeping and the sad fates of two of the three queen ants that I caught. There are timestamps in the top left corner of the screen throughout the video that show the time of each recording and which queen is in the frame at any given time. With that said, I hope you all enjoy this week's video and let's get into it. It all began one night, in the middle of July, when I saw a Laceus Neoniger queen ant scurrying on the ground. It had just had its nuptial flight, so I picked it up and put it in a test tube. There were two other queen ants I also found later on that night, and I was oblivious for the devastating future that two of these queens would have. Fast forwarding to the 26th of July, we get our first view of the queen ants, all in their test tubes, waiting for their first workers. So let's start off with the good news. The third and final queen I caught that night was well on the way to becoming a successful mother to her first batch of workers. There are some eggs and a good amount of larva present, and she seems to be doing well. Some of my earlier viewers may know that I had a Laceus Neoniger colony in the past, and my last video on them was moving them into an acrylic nest from Ants Australia, almost two years ago I think. Since then, the colony had stopped eating. They stopped moving from the nest into the outworld and slowly they started to die off, and I was not sure why, so I let them go into the wild. I have really missed keeping this species since then, so I'm happy to say that if all goes well and this queen has her first workers, that you can expect a lot of future videos on this colony on the channel. Checking back on the queen a week later, you can see that some of the larvae have turned into pupa. There are quite a few pupa, some enclosed in a cocoon and some not. There are also some other larvae and I think there's a few eggs in there too. Laceus Neoniger are some of the most active ants that I have ever kept, which is why I really want to get another colony of them going. This queen looks healthy, and this is a very good sign for the future. The second queen that I caught during the nuptial flight was not looking so great. Firstly, she still had her wings. This is definitely not a sure sign of the queen having not mated. In fact, the queen shown previously to this one had her wings when I caught her as well but she has since broken them off in the test tube. What really makes me worried though, is that the eggs this queen laid were spread out from each other and they turned yellow and died, which is a likely sign of infertility. I did not get to film anything more of her because she sadly died a couple days later, definitely due to being infertile. And here is the first queen that I caught that night. She did not have any wings when I caught her, unlike the other two, which made me optimistic that this queen would be the one to start my new colony. She hadn't laid any eggs for the first couple weeks that I had her, which made me wonder if she was just waiting or did not feel safe in her setup. One day I checked on this queen and I was super surprised to see a large cocoon in her test tube that was not there the day before. And this queen's gaster, i.e. the lower section of her body, was all dried out and it looked like something had been eating her from the inside out. I had only seen videos of this happening before and I never thought that I would experience this firsthand, but I knew exactly what it was. A fly had likely laid an egg on this queen while she was mating or searching for a suitable spot to dig her founding chamber. It stayed on her until it hatched into a larva and then burrowed inside of her, slowly eating the inside of this queen until the larva had grown large enough to emerge from the queen. Right after this, it had wrapped a cocoon around itself, which was when I found it. I decided to remove this fly cocoon from the test tube and put it in a smaller tube to observe and see what happened to it. And as for this poor queen, I knew her fate had been sealed, so I gave her a final drop of nectar to try and bring her comfort. All of her insides had been eaten by the fly larva, and it had exited through her gaster, so I knew there was no way that she would make it. But she never even touched the honey, and she ended up dying the next morning. I can't even imagine what this queen had gone through, and I couldn't have done anything about it. I never even knew about it until it was much too late. This is a prime example why catching multiple queen ants during a nuptial flight is super important, because you never know what can happen. The main reason why so many queen elates are produced is because their survivability rates are so low. About a week after this queen died, I saw the fly trying to emerge from its cocoon, 
so I got a couple of pictures of it, and then I killed it right away. So now here I am. I caught three queen ants, and only one of them was still alive. This is unusual for me. My rule of thumb is to always catch three queen ants, and most of the time all three make it. And then when they have their first workers, I let two of the colonies go. But in this case, there was only one left. And if she died, I'd have to wait a whole nother year to start a Lacius colony. But luckily, she made it through the founding stage, and had three of her first workers. The problem was that their test tube had run out of water while I was on vacation, and they needed to be moved as soon as possible. I made a new test tube for them, and then proceeded with the move. What I did to achieve this was I attached the two tubes together, put tape around where the tubes connected, leaving a small hole for ventilation, but small enough for the colony not to escape. My next step was to put something over the new test tube to make it dark and I shined a bright light over the old one. This made the colony eager to want to move somewhere darker. So when the three workers made sure the new nest was safe and yielded no predators, they slowly started moving the brood into the new nest and finally they moved the queen as well. Now we fast forward a few days to August 14th, 2023, which is currently the present day. The colony has adjusted to the new setup and are doing very well having a batch of larvae and three active workers that take care of the queen. I am very optimistic that this third colony will survive. They have a good amount of larvae in their test tube, which will result in the colony growing much larger when they hatch. I expect this colony to hibernate in their test tube for their first winter, and when spring rolls around, I will move them into a mini hearth, just like my old colony. They did very well in a mini hearth in the past, so I will see if this colony has the same success. I sure hope so. With all that said, let's give this colony some honey as a sort of housewarming gift. You may have noticed that throughout this video and in this clip that the queen's back left leg does not work properly. The story behind this is that I was out searching for queens and I did not have much success only catching two queens. I was about to wrap it up when out of nowhere this queen flew on my arm and upon instinct I slapped the queen ant not realizing what it was. I looked down and then saw it was a queen ant that flew on my arm. I was really saddened by this, but I put her in a test tube anyways, thinking that because she still had her wings it was likely that she had not mated. But indeed she had mated, and I was lucky that she survived my attack. Her leg ended up healing to the best of its ability and she lost her arms and overcame the odds of the other two and founded her own colony. When this first worker found the honey, it did not know what to make of it, so it tried to spray it with formic acid, and doing that it got itself stuck. Another worker came and tried to help it, but at this point, both of the workers were too busy drinking the honey to care about anything else. You can see that for the time being this worker put freeing itself on hold until it has had its share of the honey. You can see this worker's gaster expanding as it drinks. Once its social stomach is full, it realizes the predicament it has put itself in and then focuses on trying to escape. You can see that this worker is having a heck of a time trying to escape from the honey. Every time the worker pulls, it gets sucked right back in similar to quicksand. I realized at this point that I gave them too big of a glob of honey, but it did not look like that at first. Over time the honey spread out from the original glob I put on, so I realized I needed to remove the majority of it. I knew I had to step in, or else this worker would likely die, or at least it would make a big mess trying to get itself out. So I grabbed the tweezers, I pulled out the cotton of the test tube, and then I put the syringe in the test tube, pushing the worker out of the honey and then removing the rest of it. After that whole ordeal, there were still some honey droplets left in the test tube, which they happily drank up. One of the workers was also covered in honey, so they cleaned each other off. This was the first meal that this queen had had in a very long time, since it emerged from its main nest and began founding its own colony. So much that it was smothering the worker trying to get as much as it could. Ah. 
hope you all enjoyed this week's video and found it informative and interesting. A good takeaway from this video would be to always catch multiple queens when you are looking to start a colony because you never know what happened between their nuptial flights and when you found them. If you all did enjoy, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And with all that said, thank you all for watching and I will see all of you in the next one. Peace.